So, Fabrizio, do you speak to players who want to move? So, a lot of players are directly texting, or I'm texting them too, sometimes, to ask information, or sometimes they tell me, please, can you say something about me because I want to leave the club? <laughs> so, yes, it's happening. So, you get some top players sliding into your DMs, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I was playing five-side football with my friends. Then the ball goes out. I go to check my phone, as I always do. Well, when you're playing five-a-side football, you still check your phone when the ball goes out of play. <laughs> Welcome to The Rest is Football with me, Gary Lineker, Mike Richards and Alan Shearer. And as it's transfer deadline day, we have ourselves a special guest, the king of the transfer <laughs> scoop, a certain Fabrizio Romano. Uh, Fabrizio? Here we go. Uh, Thanks very much uh, for joining us at your busiest uh, time of the year. Thank you. How frantic is it? Uh, Completely crazy. First of all, thank you for the invitation. It's a big pleasure for me to be here. So thanks again, really. And it's really, really pure madness, I would say. Uh, Spending all day on my phone. Uh, I was even late here, so sorry again, but my phone is really blowing up and uh, it's impossible to, to stop. But, you know, it's my favorite time of the year. I love it. I love to be in contact and in touch with people all day and so ready for the, for the final hours. Because football's so global, I, I presume you don't get much sleep on this last week. Oh, impossible, impossible. <laughs> last night was like two hours, so that's my life. <laughs> Fabrizio, how did, you, uh, how did you get into this? Look, I started when I was um, 17, uh, a kid, I would say. Uh, I was in Napoli, I'm from Napoli, my family is still there. And so I was there and I was writing on very small websites. Then one day... My life changed because I was mm, practicing on very small, small Italian websites. And one day he called me from, from Barcelona. He was not an agent. He was a guy working in La Masia in the Academy of Barcelona. And he calls me. I still don't know how he had my phone number because I was not an important journalist. I was just a normal guy trying on a small website. And he called me and he told me, I'm a guy who is trying to approach some players here in La Masia. It was completely different football, imagine. It was like 13 years ago. Uh, I'm trying to approach some players. I'm a big friend of the agent of one of these players, Mauro Icardi. And so if you can please publish something on your website about Mauro Icardi and Gerard de Rofeo, these two players who are in Barcelona Academy, so I can show them that I'm making some rumors around them. And uh, at the end, I can uh, try to approach them and enter into people managing the future. And uh, that's how I started. I said, okay, no worries. Send me some information about these players, how they play, how are their skills. I published those informations. And then Icardi moved from Barcelona to Sampdoria and then from Sampdoria to Inter. It was my first news. Uh, I <laughs> broke the story of, of Mauro Icardi joining Inter. And then going from there, I moved to Milano and I started to spend like six, seven years every single day during the transfer window in January in the summer around the city. Hotels, restaurants, meeting with people, <laughs> agents, directors, presidents, players. And that's how I built the network and then social media. And, and that's the story. How do, you, how do you get paid? How do you get your salary? <laughs> <laughs> there are different ways to be on traditional, uh, on traditional media. So, you know, with, uh, for example, working with uh, newspapers or TV, this kind of collaborations, but also new media like social media platforms, right. uh, helping to, to build some collaboration so there are different ways uh, this is not easy because sometimes you have to be creative no not just as a journalist but also as, a, as an agent of yourself so i try to do my best but i like it uh, i like challenges in general and so well you do an amazing job well done thank you how thank difficult you. is it to to work out um what's a genuine story and and, and often I'm, i imagine a lot of your contacts are from agents trying to push their players in certain positions flying kites so to speak you how, how how trusted are they do you build up that over time yeah it's not easy at all honestly it's not easy at all especially after what happened this summer with saudi stories uh, you know, it's, it's not easy. I was lucky enough to be in uh, in Saudi in January when Cristiano had his debut with Al Nasser. And so I had the chance to build some contacts there. But it was really complicated at the beginning of the summer transfer window to be in touch with the correct people. And in general, it's not easy when you have big platform, big numbers. A lot of people is approaching you, trying to sell you stories. And so for me, it's absolutely crucial to be accurate. This has always been my mission, number one. Try to be accurate. Take some time, even if you are not first on the story. It's important to be accurate. So this is what I'm trying to do. I have some contacts and some sources that I trust 100%. So if they send me a message or they call me, I know that that story is 100% correct because they are never creating any issue to me. But many times now with, again, big numbers, a lot of people try to approach you and try to tell you things. So it's not easy. It takes time. But I think the only way to be successful in transfer market journalism is the obsession. You have to be on it every single day. If you want to relax, 
is not going to be for you. So <laughs> it's very complicated. So, Fabrizio, do you speak to players who want to move as well as it just your agents? Or... Yeah, this is something new, honestly, because till like two, three years ago, it was almost impossible. Then I think Instagram changed the game. That because, for example, on Twitter, a couple of years ago, it was impossible to get in touch with players. It was not that kind of platform. It's an excellent platform, but it was completely different uh, approach with with people on the on the platform. Now with Instagram, it's easier. So a lot of players are directly texting, or I'm texting them too sometimes to ask information. Or so sometimes they tell me, "Please, can you say something about me because I want to leave the class?" <laughs> so yes, it's happening. And, uh, and it's something strange. It feels still strange to me, but sometimes also big names are texting and they want to receive information or share information. So this is the new read of the transfer market probably. So you get some um, top players sliding into your DMs, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Fabrizio, do you ever anger a f- football clubs? Do, do you ever get yeah, managers or coaches or coming on to you saying, "Why are you sh- why are you doing this? You got that wrong information, or or you you're pushing our player down a certain route." Yeah, it always happens. I, I won't <laughs> say every day, but it's always happening, and I think it's normal. I really respect them. I understand that sometimes they want to to save the stories. But look, one of the best parts of my of my job uh, is that everything I'm doing is always you know with good faith. So I'm never going to create a problem because I have to help someone or try to to get some player out of the club. This is something that I would never do. If you start doing this one time, it's the end of your job in the transfer market industry. So, uh, for example, it happened to me that it was a very big story. It was in March, end of March, when Bayern decided to uh, fire Nagelsmann and to bring in Thomas Tuchel as new coach. That was very surprising, out of nowhere. I broke that story, and I remember the reaction was very furious to me, like, what is this? Why did you break the story? But then the sources at Bayern respected me because they told me, you tried to call us. You spent two hours calling us before sharing the story. And we really respect that because we were angry the first moment we saw the story out, okay, we were not happy. But then you tried to check the story. You were not just reporting what you know and nothing else. So for me, that was very important and made me understand once again that it's always important to be in good relation. What is your biggest coup? What is the biggest thing that you've re- revealed? Look, there are there there are a couple of, of, of coups for me. The favorite one remains Bruno Fernandes to Manchester United because it changed my life. In what way did it change your life? Because I was reporting on Italian football till that moment, also something on European football. But in that case, uh, with Bruno, it really changed my life because I understood that it was ground to make something special on European and international transfer market. I had the story of Bruno joining May United after spending the whole summer telling May United fans on Twitter, no, he's not coming. And all the people mm-hmm. shouting at me like, no, he's coming in the Portuguese and English players. They're saying he's almost done. And I was like, no, 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 he's not joining. Then in January, when he joined the club, I had the picture of Bruno with his agent on the private flight ready to go to, to Manchester. <laughs> and that moment changed my life. The biggest one, I would say, this Nagelsmann took a story was really incredible. I was really shocked when I heard about that because Nagelsmann was in a fantastic mm-hmm. position at Bayern, so it was completely unexpected. But my favorite remains uh, the one about Zinedine Zidane uh, leaving Real Madrid uh, and deciding to, to leave the club. It was absolutely incredible to me because, you know, you can have many stories, but one is Zinedine Zidane and yeah. one is Real Madrid yeah. is something else. Tell us, how did you get that story then? Look, I was playing football. Uh, it was the night of the Europa League final between Villarreal and Manchester United. I still remember that. I was playing five-side football with my friends. Uh, I was in Sardinia, so enjoying some, some time with my friends. Then the ball goes out. I go to check my phone, as I always do. Well, when you're playing five-a-side football, you still check your phone when the ball goes out of play. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, I have to. And so I was checking my phone. I look at the message and was one guy telling me, look, there is a message in Real Madrid chat with all the players where Zinedine Zidane said, uh, tomorrow I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to speak to Florentino Perez. It's over for me here. And I decided to, to leave the club. And so I was checking on Zidane's side, but then after two, three checks, I, I got the confirmation and uh, and that's how I got the story. But it was really, really big for me. I was like, okay, Zidane was an incredible football player, an mm. incredible legend of the game. And now to report on Zidane at Real Madrid <laughs> and to broke the story was something incredible. Did you finish the five-a-side game or did you just rush <laughs> no, off? No, I didn't. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> you let your teammates down, but the, you, the, yeah, with, with good re- reason for that. <laughs> yeah. there, there are a lot of people now, I think... Um, it, well, it's always been an interesting world, transfers and stuff. So you, you've got many competitors, I suppose. That Do they sometimes get a little bit jealous? And and I think there's no. a lot of stealing <laughs> of stories, isn't there? If somebody does it. Yeah. I notice if it's someone else's story that you will give, you will put their at in at the bottom of your tweet or 
Instagram post. Of course. My, I think it would be not human to cover the whole international mm. transfer market with one single person. So it would be stupid, I think, uh, from me to, to pretend something like that. That's why I'm not jealous at all. And I think that if the industry is growing, it's just positive for me and for all the people working into it. Because I think when I started, when I was like 18, 20, the transfer market journalist was not uh, at this level at all. It was full of stupid gossips, fake stories. Uh, so now the accurate journalism is completely on a different level. And I am a big fan of some people doing this job in Spain, in Germany, in England, uh, for example, David Orstein. I always see people in Twitter putting me against David, but he's one of my best friends in the football industry. And I think he's a fantastic journalist. I am only admiring his job as many others. So uh, I don't see any competition. I think still things are respectful as they are on the on the social media, and on traditional media, is something that I'm always respecting, and I'm very happy to be part of that. You must, you must never sleep. You must be checking your phone 24/7. And look, uh, it's almost like this. It's almost like this. Then it depends on the moments. I think it's crucial to understand the moments. There are moments you know better than me. That sometimes when there are games, for example, on Saturday and Sunday, it's easier to rest a bit more because yeah. nothing is happening. All the directors are maybe traveling with the squad, so nothing is happening on a transfer market. So you have to understand the moments, but there are moments like this week where you can sleep. So it's like two, three hours. Uh, and even <laughs> when I try to sleep, I tell you, it happened to me, it was like last week. I was sleeping, it was like 6 a.m. in the morning, and I woke up and I was dreaming of something about Chelsea signing the striker. <laughs> it was, but, but really, I'm not joking. Eh? I'm not joking. <laughs> this is not a good news for me and for my mental health, but it's a reality. I was dreaming of Chelsea signing a blonde player. So ah. I was like, okay, what's happening? And then I was checking my phone and it was just dreaming. That's it. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Fabrizio, would you like to just check your phone briefly to see if we can get a scoop during this um, podcast? I, I received a message about <laughs> Luis Felipe from Betis going to what it had. 22 million euros plus three in a so <laughs> That was the last one. So. <laughs> there you go. I mean, and sadly, this won't sound like an exclusive in three days' time when, when we're going to put it out actually on transfer day. We're doing this on, on yeah. the Tuesday because obviously transfer deadline day would have been a, a little bit too much uh, for you. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. Has, has player power uh, made a difference in, in the transfer world now? We see some players, you know, refusing to take part in training. I think, um, wasn't it, Mateus Nunez has, has done something yes. similar in the last week? Yes, I think this is the new uh, the new trend of the transfer market. The players have big power, I would say. Uh, also, look what happened with Caicedo. Caicedo's story was crazy this summer, but it really changed because of the player, because Liverpool had everything created with Brighton, and Caicedo for 12 hours was a Liverpool player till he decided to send a message to Jurgen Klopp uh, multiple <laughs> times during the day because Klopp tried and tried during the afternoon. But Caicedo was like, no, I want to go to Chelsea. And so even for Brighton, was kind of issue to restart the negotiation, to take 48 hours more. Uh, they were very able in the negotiation with Chelsea because at the end they got more than what they received from, from Liverpool. But it's not always easy. So yes, the players are in, in control now, I would say, yes. What do you think is the significance now of the um, interest from Saudi Arabia and the amount of players that, that could go there? This is a big problem, I think, especially for the timing. I really respect what they're doing because I think it's cycles in football. It can happen that there are new uh, nations or new new leagues that are trying to show their, their ambition. I think the biggest problem is about the timing of the transfer window, closing one week after the European mm. transfer window. I understand many people in the industry being very worried with that because you can tempt player on the 3rd or 4th or 5th of September and you don't have any chance to react. So this is the biggest issue, I think. And also there is a lot of people, now it's more clear because it's the end of the transfer window, but at the beginning of the window, like end of May, beginning of June, a lot of fake people was entering into the business, just trying to approach some people from Saudi. It was completely new, not just for journalists, but also for people into the clubs. They were not uh, prepared probably to negotiate with the correct people. Yeah. Uh, I still remember many issues in many deals. For example, Brozovic to Al Nasser was full of fake people trying to enter the story. So. Uh, it's, it's not easy. It's like restarting, not just for journalists, but also for some directors, for some presidents. You have to rebuild your network because there is new people approaching the market. So now it's easier. It took three months, but at the beginning it was not easy how, at all. How far do you think you can take this? Because obviously you've got a, a massive following and it's done in a different way. I know a lot of journalists, like you've mentioned before, may be happy and some may not be happy, but you've got a different approach. How far can you take it? Honestly, uh, I will take it uh, as far as I can in terms of enjoying that. Now I'm happy because I'm enjoying not just the professional side, but even the human side. My favorite moment in the transfer window is the day after when I call <laughs> my favorite sources and I start 
speaking in normal way as Fabrizio and not as the journalist. That is my favorite side of the of the of the transfer window. But if you start feeling too much pressure, if you are not enjoying, that is the moment when you have to to stop. So I always say it's like for a player, no? Uh, it's important to understand, and you can understand way better than me. When is the moment to say, okay, stop? Now it's time to 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 retire, to to leave this job, or to maybe do something different because you can't go forever. I, I already know that. I think it's gonna take some time. I hope like three, four, maybe five years more. But I won't continue for that forever because it's gonna be too too difficult. So I think five years maybe. Uh, do you have a team behind you? Do you have t- people helping you, or you just you go solo? I just have two guys who help me with editing the videos and I produce like on YouTube, and then for all the other stuff, everything you see posted on my social media accounts is always posted by myself. Uh, I would never allow anyone to publish anything in my name. Uh, it's a respect I think for all the people following me, but also. I would never be able to control that. And you know, in the transfer market, how crucial is every single word. If you say agreement or verbal agreement is completely different. So for me, it's crucial to control everything, to post everything by myself. And so I would never change that. Even in the contact with with my sources, I would never allow anyone to call and say, I'm working with Fabrizio, can you share information with me? That's not in my style. I like to be in control of everything. So some help with the editing of the videos because I'm terrible at that. And then it's- Well, it's impossible, isn't it? To get everything right. You're you're gonna get some things wrong. When it goes wrong and the information, it turns out to be incorrect or doesn't happen is, how disappointing is that? Look, at the beginning of my career, it was very disappointing. So I was like mad for two, three days. I was very, very sad for, <laughs> for a couple of days. Then now I understand that the importance of sending the correct message to people, if you want to be part of the transfer window, I mean, as a follower too, just looking at it and, and being informed on the, on the transfer news, you have to understand that part of this jungle is also for some deals to collapse for multiple reasons. Uh, for the medical test, maybe for the wife of the player changing her, her mind, or maybe because the club is too slow to complete the documents and another club is jumping into the race. It happened with Danjuma, for example, with Everton in January. That was a done deal, but really done deal. The player was there on the ground taking pictures with the shirt. Mm-hmm. So I can't control that. I can't sign contracts. That's what I always say. Uh, my job is to tell you when there is an agreement, when there is uh, a player traveling for medical test, that's what I have to do. Then I can't sign contracts. So I'm trying to make people understand that sometimes this can happen. Otherwise, you can wait for the official statement. You don't need Fabrizio or any other journalist. Do you know um, in any way what goes into players' contracts now as well, which is would be quite interesting to people? I suppose the salaries you, you can publish sometimes. Yeah, honestly, I, I always try to avoid that part because you can't always be under percent informed. And I know it really annoys players. So... I think this is something that sometimes we have in football. Sometimes you put a salary because you have clear information. But um, until I have 100% clear and confirmed information on the player side, and I make sure that the player wants to share that. Uh, for example, it happened with Neymar. When Neymar joined uh, Alilal, they really wanted from Neymar camp to share the details of the salary. There are many other players who prefer oh. to keep it private, and I really respect that. Why, so, why would they want to share that, that information? Because Neymar is the player who moved the biggest salary probably in the history of football mm. recently with Paris Saint-Germain, Barcelona and, and Dalilal, maybe because of that. I don't know, but I always try to respect the source. So, you know, if the player doesn't want, I'm not going to share their private information. So at the end, it's private information. Who do you support? Watford. <laughs> how? <laughs> what? Yeah. How and no, why? I'm, I'm <laughs> why? <laughs> because I was at the TV when there was that crazy game with Troy Dean scoring against Leicester. Oh, what? And I, I, I was buzzing, really. <laughs> yes, yes, you yes. And, uh, you know, my, my league with Watford because of the Italian ownership. So... Obviously, with the Pozzo family, I started to follow English football. And for me, this attraction to work for London, the Italian family taking care of the club, for me, was really attractive. Then that game with Troy Dini scoring, with Gianfranco Zola on the bench, for me, was like uh, incredible. That's, that's not possible. So, let, so, so let's, get this, let's get this straight, Fabrizio. You support Watford because they yeah. beat my team, Leicester. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> but that's the story. <laughs> Jesus, that's a scoop. <laughs> uh, no, Fabrizio I, I know you've got to go you've got a very busy few days ahead of you and um, thanks so much for talking to us um, it's, it's, it's been fascinating thank you thank you thanks thank to you. all of you really it was a pleasure with Legends with you you must be getting pleasure. the itches you haven't checked your phone for 20 minutes yes I'm very worried <laughs> but it was, it was okay thank you thank you ciao thanks <laughs>